Greetings from Igloo Regional Center of Kochi. This program is under Innovation Club activity and this is called as the open session come engagement session so that when you are addressing your grievance redressal, you have some take home message or an enrichment knowledge of what is being deliberated by a resource person. In today's enrichment session, we have Professor Dr. Diksha Kapoor, Professor School of Continuing Education, IGNU New Delhi, who is going to share about the importance of nutrition among women and young girls. Before the resource person takes the floor, I request Dr. Prasita Unikrishnan, Assistant Director, to share of what is Innovation Club activity and what are the various uh, themes which has been covered so far. Over to Dr. Prasita Unikrishnan. Thank you, Dorothy, madam. Uh, so, a very warm welcome to Diksha, ma'am, for this session. Uh, Thank you. Uh, just to give you a brief historical perspective about uh, what we have been holding at Igno Regional Center, Cochin. Uh, in fact, uh, the Innovation Club at Igno Regional Center, Cochin, was initiated under the encouragement of the National Center for Innovation and Distance Education, which is at Igno Headquarter, Delhi. And uh, under Regional Center Coaching, we have been holding a series of monthly lectures identified as open session come enrichment session since September 2018. And the sessions are usually held with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of ICMO on a wide range of topics ranging from time management, career management, e-support services of ICMO, entrepreneurial opportunities available, innovations in ICT interventions in education, uh, entrepreneurial transformation of the conduct of education in India, uh, life skills for a successful living, uh, and bringing out even the uh, bringing out the best in people, unleashing the power of effective communication, and even uh, about the life enhancement skills which are required for an enriching student life and uh, startup journey. My startup journey, even the experiences of students on their startup journey, has also been shared in these sessions. So uh, it, it's also a platform when the students join to resolve the grievances with respect to the subject they are pursuing IGNO. So the last, uh, actually, in fact, we all know that March 8th is the International Women's Day. And uh, it's also a special day for women and the theme for the 2024 Women's Day is Invest in Women and Accelerate Program. And uh, uh, as a part of the celebrations of the International Women's Day, uh, we are holding this uh, session. So, so we are very happy to have you, ma'am, for this session. And uh, I'm sure our uh, ICNO learners, as well as this, uh, uh, who are viewing this session, would be uh, taking home many, uh, many good uh, points from your session. So I warmly welcome you, ma'am, to the session on importance of nutrition among women and young girls. Before uh, I hand over to you the session, I would request uh, Jay Stoti, madam, to kindly introduce you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Professor Diksha Kapoor, ma'am. She has done her PhD in nutrition from University of Delhi. And after completing MSc Nutrition, Food and Nutrition from Lady Irwin College and BSc Home Science, Lady Irwin College, Delhi. Madam has also completed PG Diploma in Distance Education from IGNU and Diploma in Sports Nutrition, International Olympic Committee. So ma Madam has been uh, an eminent nutritionist, a professor uh, in the School of Continuing Education and also a very good senior for all the men and be a mentor for uh, juniors like us throughout our uh, career at IGNU. And uh, Madam has been kind enough to be with us to uh, share uh, the on the topic importance of nutrition among women and young girls. Remember, friends, you have been uh, accustomed with two terminologies. One is you are what you eat, and eat right um, uh, India movement, both which has been covered in the International Year of Millets last year. If you want to revisit of on Eat Right India Movement and International Year of Millets, please visit the 
Igno Regional Center Kochi YouTube channel and be benefited. Now oh, the floor is uh, thrown, uh, given to Professor Diksha Kapoor to handle the session on importance of nutrition among women and young girls. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Dorothy. It's such a pleasure to be here today and a very warm uh, good afternoon to the RC Kochi, um, to you, Dorothy, to your staff, to the students who are here today, and all others guests who are here listening to this talk. As Dorothy has already informed that it is part of the uh, Women's International Day, or let me call it Women's International Week, because we've gone past it. And, um, you know, celebrating Women's Day, Women's Week is all about, you know, creating an awareness, creating an awareness about um, what is the status of women, how we can empower them, uh, what they are eating. And in that context, this idea of um, Dr. Dorothy to invite me to talk about nutrition for women and young girls. I'm happy this is the focus. And um, for the next 30 minutes or so, I will be, uh, well, I can't cover everything, but I will try to do justice to this important aspect, which is of great importance, particularly for India. What I'll do is I'll share my presentation. And uh, let me share. No, no, just a minute. Your screen. Why can't it share? Give me a minute. Let me. No, I not able to mm. okay now I can share yeah can you see can you see yes. can somebody tell me if they can see my yes ma'am you can see it yes 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 yeah okay yes. great so um let me see if I can put it on a slideshow and if we can see it um, from current. Yeah. Now, is the slideshow on? Yes? No, ma'am. No, no ma'am. No, it is not? Uh, okay. Then I think I'll have to just get back and start. Uh, I'll then not uh, do it there, but I'll just start from the first slide again. Just give me a second. Yeah. Now you can see? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, you no. can't. Uh, you can't see the slide. No, we can see the slide, but not in a slideshow mode, ma'am. Okay, but you can see the slide. Great. So, so today the topic is about importance of nutrition for women and young child. So, what I'm going to talk to about? Let me begin by talking about the nutrition and health status. What do I mean when I'm saying nutritional status of women? young girls basically nutritional status is the condition of health which is as influenced by the utilization of nutrients which are present in the food which the women young girls are eating so it's like a um, um, we must understand we must know where do we stand today what is the report card the nutritional and health report card of women in our country, of young girls in our country. So the first 10-15 minutes, I will take you through to give you an idea of where we are. Today, as we talk, you know, over the last decade or more, what is happening that India has entered a dual nutrition burden era. Dual nutrition burden, we are calling. Why? Because today, women are suffering not only because of lack of proper food in the diet when we are talking about the utilization of nutrients which will impact on the health so if we are having good nutrition we will have a good health when our diet is poor 
the outcome is malnutrition. So today, what we see is that India is passing through a dual nutritional burden. On one side, we see our population groups, the vulnerable groups like women, young girls, uh, children under five years of age, they are suffering from undernutrition, which means poor nutrition. And this, whatever I speak today, I'm going to be supporting it with the national data. It is not my data, it's the national data. The national agencies are giving us this data to give us a picture of where we stand today. So what we notice that about one fourth, 20% of the women are thin, are wasted, are undernourished, meaning BMI is one measure, body mass index, which measures the weight over height. And 18.5 uh, is the cutoff. So women, there are about 20% women who have a BMI of less than 18.5, indicating a high prevalence of undernutrition and even among these 20%, there are large group who are moderately and severely thin. Just to help you understand, look at this data. This is again from the National Family Health Survey. I am taking this data for the last two decades, starting from 2005-06 till 2015-16. What does it show? If you look at the upper parts, the blues are for uh, men and the pinks is for females or women. What do you notice? That under nutrition levels are higher among young women, among women in the age group 20 to 39 years. Almost 30 to 35 percent of these women are thin, so, uh, indicating undernourishment. And then as the undernutrition declines, as the women grow, as they age, this undernutrition declines and then women tend to be more overnourished or suffer from overweight. And this is a pattern which we are seeing from our data in our country. Now, if I move further, if you look at this data, which is the stunting data, the first parameter I showed you was for thinness or wasting among women, which is giving us a picture of undernourishment. Similarly, stunting, stunting meaning low height or less height that if you look at the prevalence of stunting among adolescent girls 15 to 19 years, here is the picture for the entire country, for urban, rural. But what it's a rather small figure, but in the box at the bottom, what I'm trying to show you is that just in the last two decades from 2005-06, 29% of adolescent girls were stunted, meaning they had a height less then that it should be for that age. And that figure too has gone up to about 34%. And more girls are stunted as compared to boys. So what does this stunting indicate? Stunting is not easily, um, you know, it doesn't exhibit easily. It is only when there is chronic undernutrition, when the individual has been um, subjected to lack of food for a very long period of time that the height of the individual is also being affected. So this is the situation today as we talk that large number of adolescent girls today are stunted. If we go further down, we started with women, we went on to 15 to 19. Look at the figures for uh, children under five years of age and particularly young girls. What do we see? There is widespread of malnutrition, protein, energy, malnutrition among these children. And how do we get to know? We look at their wasting, which is the weight for their height, underweight, the weight for their age and stunting. We look at their heights for that age. What does this data tell us? If you look at it, 
wasting wasting is low weight for height as i've just told you it is a life threatening um, condition which is caused due to insufficient nutrient intake which means the children are not getting enough food to maintain their uh, weight uh, for their height or for their age severely wasted children under the age of five look at the last block here in the last three decades starting from 2005 6 to today 2019 21 that is the latest data we have on wasting what do we see instead of so many programs being put by the government the feeding programs the uh, prophylactic programs the nutrient supplementation programs still we are not able to control the um, figures have gone up from 6.4 percent children who were severely wasted in 2005-06 that number has gone up to 7.7 percent today and as uh, i'm just telling you it's a life-threatening we are uh, having a large mass of children who are wasted look at the stunting and the underweight figures the first and the second bars Almost one third of our population under five years of age are either underweight, meaning they have a weight less for their age, or they are stunting, stunted, having a height less for their age. And particularly stunting, as I've said, it is an indicative of chronic energy deficiency, and it undermines not only the physical growth, but it Today, the recent studies data is showing that it impacts on the cognitive development of children. These children have low memory, low IQ, low concentration power. Why? Because of lack of proper food for these children. Similarly, <clears throat> one third of the children are underweight. So what we are seeing that these children are not only facing immediate uh, health impacts where they will be suffering from infections, disease, mortality, morbidity, but they these kind of figures or this kind of undernourishment has a long-term health impact as well. So today, recent research is showing that the risk of non-communicable diseases like obesity, diabetes, um, cancers, or um, hypertension, these are also um, rising when these children grow up who are undernourished now. They are at risk of developing these diseases later in life as well. So this is the report card which we I was talking about and I wanted to create an awareness. This was about the <clears throat> undernourishment or what they are eating in terms of macronutrients. Look at uh, this, uh, what I'm uh, displaying now is the prevalence of anemia. Anemia is a condition arising due to lack of iron in the diet of individuals. The latest data, which is 2000, um, um, uh, 1921, the nutrition, uh, the National Family Health Survey fifth data. What is it showing? It is showing that in the last decade or two, the prevalence, instead of coming down, there are more pregnant women who are anemic. 52.2% women are anemic today. Look at the figure, which is the first bar, which is this. Um, you know, the violet color, 59.1% adolescent girls today in our country are anemic. They lack iron in their diet, leading to anemia, iron deficiency anemia. And women in the reproductive age group, 15 to 49 years, 57, so almost 50% of our population whether it is adolescent girls, whether it is women in the reproductive age group, even during pregnancy, large group of women, young girls, they are anemic. And it has been increasing since the last decade or more. Now, what are 
do we talk about young children, children under five years of age? The condition is even bad. As you can see, the latest 2019-21 data, 67% of children under five are anemic. Just in the last 10 years, the figures have gone up from 58, 59 to 67% of children. And the situation is even worse for rural uh, women, for uh, people from lower socioeconomic uh, and children from lower socioeconomic. So these figures do make us think, do uh, you know, give us a picture of where we are and what we are talking about. So what are we seeing? That undernutrition and anemia is very much prevalent in this vulnerable age group. And both undernutrition and anemia, they have a worse effect, not only on the mother's health, maternal health, but it also impacts on the outcome of pregnancy. It also impacts her family, her children, and the community at large. So what do we do now? Uh, well, uh, before we go about that, look at how this whole scenario develops. You see, anemia. Therefore, when we have looked at the figures so far, we've talked about uh, that undernutrition and anemia. So anemia begins in childhood. As you have seen, about 69% of children one to five years are anemic. In fact, the child is born anemic. And this then aggravates, worsens or continues till adolescent. And it gets aggravated in pregnancy. So a woman who is anemic, such a woman will give birth to a baby who is of low birth weight. Low birth weight baby is a baby of weight less than 2.5 kgs. So if you look at this diagram here, which I'm trying to show you, that severe anemia, anemia is assessed through hemoglobin concentration in the blood. So a value of less than 8 uh, gram per deciliter is indicative of severe anemia. In case of severe anemia, see what is the birth weight of the child? It is less than 2.5 kg. But the good thing is that effective treatment of anemia, it improves the birth weight. This is what studies show. Just a little iron in the form of um, uh, whether we are giving a tablet to women, which is part of most of our programs. This helps improve the birth weight of the infant. So, what is the data on low birth weight then? We've talked about undernutrition, we've talked about anemia, and the outcome or the consequences is what? Low birth weight. What is the situation? What do the data say for low birth weight in our country? Today, the latest data, again, the NFHS 5 data tells us that about 16 to 17% of children are still born low birth weight in our country. Though this prevalence uh, has come down from it used to be just a decade back 30 percent of our children were born low birth weight it has come down but the situation remains bad for the girl children and particularly those girls who are born underweight to those mothers who are adolescent and stunted so these are the risk factors when you look at a, a young girl or a young mother who is stunted and who is an adolescent girl, the chances of her giving birth to a low birth weight child is very high. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about an intergenerational cycle of undernutrition. It is just not a one point thing um, that, okay, the child, when she is um, young, she gets, uh, does not get enough food. It is an intergenerational deficiency of food for many of our women and young girls in our country. So just to help you understand the concept, a child is born with low birth weight. That means that that mother whose diet is deficient in most of the nutrients 
has anemia, she's about to give birth to a child who is of low birth weight. Such a child, and particularly a girl child, she has a very low chance of survival. Even if she survives, the morbidity is the disease. That prevalence is very high. Okay? And along with it, if it is a girl child, inadequate child care, inadequate nurturing, the learning opportunities are limited for this girl child. And more important, there is a, the peril of elimination in infancy itself, the child will be eliminated. So these inequalities with which she is born leads to this child to be um, undernourished in terms of growth faltering. She will, the uh, child will have growth failure. As the data is already pointing out that she is stunted. Almost one third of the young girls under five are stunted. 35% are underweight and about 20% are wasted. Why? Because of inadequate food, inadequate childcare. And this peril of neglect, this inadequate education, learning opportunities. And by this time, if you have seen Mostly in lower income families or in rural areas where the parents are going out to work, this child has the responsibility of also now looking after the younger sibling at home. So all these things put more burden and this child then further her growth uh, norms, her growth standards, her growth is affected and she is having low weight and height. As I've shown you the thinness data there are about 20% of these girls who are stunted, who do not get enough food and they have low weight. Now, when they are at an adolescent age, many of them have an early marriage. Early marriage means early childbearing. There will be physical stress. There will be further depletion of nutrients leading to this woman who is already in a growth phase herself. Now she will embrace motherhood and there will be further depletion of nutrients from her body and she will be a low weight, low height woman now. So the biggest risk factor for undernourishment or for pregnancy today is a woman with weight less than 45 kgs or height less than 145 centimeters. Such a woman will give birth to a child who is of low birth weight, who will be anemic. And then this vicious cycle continues, continues generation after generation. And that is why where we are today, in spite of so much of intervention, so much of money, so much of, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, programs which have been put in place for the uh, improvement of the health, nutrition of women, children. I have what I have presented is the national data and we can very well imagine ourselves what is the report card for these women. So what are the nutrition challenges we are facing today? One in Every two women is anemic. One in every third child is stunted. One in every three child is malnourished. It goes on. One every fifth child is wasted, thin. And there are a large number of children who die within the first year, which is the infant mortality rate and maternal mortality rate. Not only the child, but the mother also dying during childbirth. And all these things is because, why is this situation happening? This is because of what we've talked about is the nutritional aspect. All these things are linked to the maternal diet, to the child's diet. I will talk about it just subsequently. So this is the picture of undernutrition, what I have talked about. Next, I want to talk about, I told you it's a nutrition, dual nutrition burden. On one side, our population is suffering from undernutrition. But today, what are we noticing? 
that India, particularly even in women, we are emerging as a public health. You know, these overnutrition is emerging as a public health problem, particularly more so in urban areas, not as much in rural areas, but it's catching up even there. So if you look at the data, the latest data, so the percentage of ever married women in the age 15 to 49 who are overweight or obese, it has increased from 20, 21% to 24% in 1921, just in the last one decade, 10 years, from 20% to 24, 25% is overnutrition. So here we are, you see, um, about 10 years, two decades back, say in 2005, six, they were hardly 11% or 15% of um, um, women who were obese. Today, it has almost doubled. So we have not, this is the dual nutritional burden I want to bring to your notice. On one side, we have not been able to overcome the undernutrition problems, which I've just highlighted for you. Now we have to also look at the emerging public health problem of overnutrition leading to overweight and obesity. So now it just doesn't stop there we notice that this is more in the highest wealth quantile. 31% of women are overweight. So if I'm talking about 30, 25%, that was an average moderate uh, quantile, wealth quantile. In the higher, you have 31% of women who are overweight and 8% who are obese. And another indicator is abdominal obesity. That is the waist circumference. Today, a waist circumference of more than 0.85 centimeters has been found to be indicative of the risk of heart diseases or of ill health. And the prevalence is seen to be increasing more in the urban than in rural. Almost 53.1% of the total population has a waist circumference, which is higher. And 18.8% even in the rural areas, in rural areas where men or women were doing more of physical work, even in them. So the activities have come down and this burden of overweight is now facing us. All right. So what is the cause of all this? Well, to assess all this, how do we know? We know this as you have been seeing so far, what I've presented, we have the anthropometric outcomes, meaning we are taking the height, we are taking the weight. We are also doing the biochemical assessment, like for anemia, we are doing the hemoglobin. And this is giving us a picture of where our women, children are standing. What does their report card on health says? But another good indicator is what are they eating? Why is the situation so poor? And the answers lie in understanding their food intake, what they are taking, what they are eating, the maternal dietary intake. What we are seeing that it is not only the energy intake, not only in pregnancy or otherwise, but what we are noticing, chronic nutrient deficiency, particularly energy from early childhood, as you have seen, right after birth, one to five years, you have seen the data, right from that time when there is chronic energy deficiency in the diet of these children. These are the major factors which are leading to low body weight um, and all the aspects which we have covered, particularly in the lower income women. And to help you understand this more, it is not that I am just telling you about it, but again, from the data which we have. You see, what I'm presenting, this is my plate for the day. This is the um, ICMR, National Institute of Nutrition. What do they tell us? What we should eat? That is the body which tells us what should my plate uh, look like when I'm eating? What should be my diet? As I said, the nutritional status is the state of health, which is influenced by the nutrients I get from my diet. So this is how the plate should look, they recommend. What? In terms of nutrients, this plate, what I eat in the entire day, 
50 to 60 percent of the total calories must come from carbohydrates. Carbohydrates meaning your uh, cereals and uh, um, your uh, roots and tubers, sugars, 50 to 60 percent of the total calories. About 20 to 30 percent of the total energy because we need energy to do the work. They should come from fats and oils and 10 to 15 percent energy from protein foods which are the bodybuilding foods of course uh, proteins the major function is to build the body maintain the body repair the body but they also provide energy okay but if you look at this plate the left side it is full of fruits seasonal fruits vegetables which are the protective food these are the foods which prevent us from all the deficiencies, diseases, the conditions I have been talking about. This is what they recommend. That um, the recommendations they give us that how much should a pregnant woman eat, how much uh, uh, women should eat. They say that all essential macronutrients like the essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, all the micronutrients like iron, vitamin A, iodine, calcium, all these should come from whole grain cereals, variety of green and leafy vegetables, other vegetables, pulses, beans, they must be included with the recommended level of milk. Milk is the most important which needs to be included. This is what the recommendations, this is the importance of nutrition, this is what we need to eat. But what do we observe? This is the plate for a rural and for an urban population, particularly when we look at this for the women and children. What do we see? Cereal and millets. I mean, just looking at the plate, you can get an idea. Whereas the whole half plate should have been of protective foods. We have three fourths of the plate having cereals. So in the urban, uh, the recommendations say that the from cereals and millets, 45% should of the energy should come from them. Whereas uh, in the urban and rural, if you look at it, 49 and 69 for pulses, meat, poultry, which give protein, 14%. Whereas look at the amount, only 8.8% .8 in the urban and even lower 6% in the rural. Fruits and vegetables, which are the protective food, and 8 to 11 percent of the energy must come from there. Look at the figures for the country three in the urban and only 1.8. Likewise, whole nuts, oil seeds. But look at the last one other foods, chips, biscuits, sweets, the highly processed foods, which are now flooding the markets. If you look at it, highest. 10% energy is derived from there in urban. Rural also is not far behind. 4% is coming from there. So what do we observe? What is the common observation? Across most population groups, these carbohydrates are coming from starchy cereals. They are being consumed in excess of then the recommended level. Mm -hmm. What are the starchy cereals? Uh, refined cereals, then potatoes, sweet potatoes, this kind of food is coming more. And the healthy whole grain cereals, millets, they are totally being out of our diets. There is far less consumption of protective foods like pulses, milk, nuts, vegetables, which are the powerhouse, which gives us the micronutrients, which protect us from disease infections they are hardly included in the diet. And there is a rising uh, trend of consuming ultra processed foods, oils, fats. These ultra processed foods, which are high in fat, sugar, salt, they are contributing to the higher um, levels of overweight, obesity that I talked about earlier. So this is the common picture, which is a emerging and look at the frequency of consumption of specific foods this is a 
decade back data I'm presenting, you have milk and milk products, you have pulses, most of it, if you notice, for fruits, if you look at eggs, fish, which are the protective foods, dark green leafy vegetables, hardly, very rarely, these are being included in the diet. And that is where we are faltering. That is where the incidence of anemia and other public health problems are on the rise. And look at the average intake of food stuff as percent of RDIs. What is happening? Over the years, the cereal and pulse intakes, uh, this data is from 2075-77 till 2006. This is the National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau data, 2006. And I've tried to just compare and give you an idea. Cereals, pulses intake all have come down. Look at the green leafy vegetables. A little increase over the years, but still very low. But there is an increase in the fat intake. Slowly, slowly, the fat intakes are going up. Intakes of fruits, vegetables continue to be very low. So under such scenario, what is the nutrient intake in rural and urban areas? Once again, energy intakes are coming down. But what we need to know or we need to be careful are the micronutrients. Look at the iron intake. The iron intake in the last four decades, instead of being able to provide for, they have come down both in rural and urban areas. Look at the vitamin A intakes. They are also coming down. And the other B vitamin um, minerals, uh, sorry, the B uh, vitamin, B complex vitamins plus folic acid. The intakes have come down. So iron folic acid deficiency, we see today is one of the major problems affecting and leading to high prevalence of anemia in our country. Vitamin A intakes are so low that uh, preschool children, girls have night blindness. Why? All these diseases have food nutrition as the common cause. Lack of food in the diet has led and that is where the importance of nutrition because eating less food just does not impact as i've been saying the physical development it impacts the cognitive development it impacts the future generation it impacts the whole life cycle therefore we must understand that the time trends in energy intake i can skip this over the years even they have come down Look at the uh, nutrient intake, particularly the energy intake for pregnant women. One would expect that during pregnancy, the women's diet should be good because she is supporting the growth of a fetus inside her. In the last four decades, starting from 75 to 2005, 6, look at the energy intake. The energy intake, even in the diet of the pregnant women, instead of eating more, her record. Her um, intakes are going down. So this is what is the scenario. And that is why we need to create an awareness. Today, we have multiple burden of malnutrition affecting our population. This vulnerable women on Women's Day, if we really want, we need to create awareness. We need to talk about undernutrition. We need to talk about low birth weight, micronutrient deficiencies affecting women overweight obesity which is not far away and that is why and all these you would see the causes poor diets leading to malnutrition whether it is lack of food or whether it is excess of food so what do we do there are many recent initiatives we have the portion abhiyan that is the flagship program of our prime minister um modi ji and it the major focus is to improve key nutrition parameters for both women and children. And many activities have been planned. Like every September is the Poshan Ma across the country. And the idea is to spread awareness about women, nutrition related issues, make this month as a public movement, a key you know, it's like a Jan Andolan where nobody should be spared. It's like the polio pulse abhiyan where now 
the polio is totally eradicated. We need to do something that aggressive if we want our children, women to be healthy. And the targets were set by the National Nutrition for 2022. And we have already crossed it. But where are we? We talked about low birth weight to come down um, by 2%. Well, we are still 16 and 17 percent. It has come down, but not as we expected. The stunting rates, the prevalence to come down to 25 percent. But you have seen today almost 35 percent children are stunted. Underweight, two person point reduction in annual. Even that has not happened. Anemia, we are still far behind. So we need to aggressively take up the cause of nutrition cause of um, providing good health for our women and children because the uh, health of the new generation, next generation depends on the diet health of the mother, adolescent girls and children. So I think I will stop here. Thank you all for a very patient hearing. If there are any uh, questions, I'll be happy to uh, take them from here on. Um, so I'll stop here. Dorothy? Yeah. Thank you for the uh, deliberation, ma'am. Now I open to invite each one of you who are present to uh, ask your queries, if any. Till you think of what you want to ask uh, the resource person. I have, uh, as part of the Innovation Club activity, we also share about the Swayam courses uh, uh, which are available, which can be uh, easily enrolled. And only if you need a certification, you need to pay the fees. Uh. So as learners, we encourage you to be benefited from the courses available in the Swayam portal and also be informed that IGNU program, the courses, that is IGNU program subject as individual courses are also available in the Swayam portal. So please be benefited. And as per the new education policy, Academic Bank of Credits is also applicable to the Swayam courses as e-certification. And friends, we also want to share about life skill and I will link it up with what we are hearing. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy, maybe you could just highlight about the awareness programs like the Certificate in Food and Nutrition program. We have three courses on SWEM, independent. So, you know, for creating awareness about food, what to eat, what is nutrition, I think we can, since you're going to, you have recorded it and you're going to put it for the learners also, for them to uh, look at it at a later stage. Similarly, the Diploma in Nutrition and Health Education program. We have many courses which are also independent courses. The DNG in itself is a very important course, which the students can, you know, or the general public. Once you put it up on the YouTube, there will be people who will be listening and they can take up this program. Yes. We have uh, in Tamil, in, in English and in Hindi. We have yes. done a promotional meeting for this uh, CFL, DNG, DEC program. Okay. SOC and please be benefited friends by visiting the IGNU uh, Regional Center for Chip YouTube channel. Friends, you are listening about the importance of nutrition, of how it affects one's health, more so a woman and therefore the family, and how uh, the food that you eat has an impact across the generation the nutrient uh, imbalance, and how we can rectify it. It's all one day at a time, I should say. And as uh, people say, most of the skin care is based on what is uh, eat, uh, eaten or consumed as food. So many a time we think that it is possible to maintain a good health by taking some um, uh, supplement uh, by way of capsules or by way of health drinks. But not always it helps. As Madam was sharing, a rainbow or a colorful meal 
plate is is one indicator that you are having enough nutrients in your daily diet as a life skill education we just want to uh, share two things related to the food you eat is that uh, are you able to consume the food without skipping your meals or do you rush through your meals you drive and eat you walk and eat or you wrap and eat or how uh, do you, the skipping of the meal is always compensated by the work you do it should not be so please uh, make it a, a regular habit to consume the food and take one day at a time when it comes to your meal planning and never uh, postpone the eating time or uh, the food you eat or accumulate the food to eat uh, say for breakfast you are eating along with the lunch or the uh, along with the evening snack and the like so you are what you eat eating right is also important and the nutritional uh, condition of you determine the health of the of you as an individual and also has an impact on the health uh, aspects of how we are going to uh, survive as an adult and beyond across the generations right from birth up to the uh, uh, end of the life in this earth so uh, your nutrition uh, of uh, the food you eat has a very important role so with this thought of action uh, we um, we thank uh, uh, professor diksha kapoor for being with us for sharing a vital topic which is relevant to each one's health and the recording of this session will also be made available to the youtube channel so that you can visit and uh, revisit uh, of what is being told by the resource persons and be benefited and you can share it across to your friends also who are missed to attend uh, the session and uh, with this we thank madam for being with us uh, and uh, we are also grateful to each one of the learners who have been with us and who have been uh, listening to the facebook live session also and uh, at our regional center kochi we are specifically grateful to sr mohammad ansar madam reshma suresh for doing all the back office operations for the live relay in facebook live and also doing the needful for putting it as a video in the youtube channel uh, of vignu regional center kochi thank you friends for being with us Thank you, uh, Dorothy. It was a pleasure being here. Okay, I'll take your leave now. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you.